Welcome everybody, it's Mr. Biggums back here again, okay? Now I snuck into the school and I wanted to sneak in to show you a couple things about some math problems. So I've been going around from school to school, sneaking in and showing some students some, uh, some math problems. And I might be in a school near you, but until that time, I made this quick, quick little recording so I can show you how to add some fractions. So first thing we need to understand before we can learn how to add fractions, we need to understand what exactly is a fraction. Now, all a fraction is, is a way for us to take apart a whole and put it into parts. So when we represent a number as a part over a whole by dividing it with a fraction bar, we call it a fraction. Now, the best way I like to describe this, and like I said, I don't know when I'm going to get kicked out by the general or the principal, so I'm going to try to make this as quick as possible. If you think about having a candy bar, and let's say I have a candy bar, and I want to split it with my friends. Well, if I cut that candy bar in half, I have you know one half and I can give the other half away. Now, let's say though, another friend, he broke his candy bar up into fourths. So if I have my one half of my candy bar, I give a, my other half to another friend. And let's say a friend comes into school and he has his candy bar broken up into fourths. Well, if he gives me one fourth of his candy bar and I already have one half from the original candy bar, how much do I have total? So what we're going to do is we're going to figure out how we're going to add fractions. Well, let's look at it this way. Let's say I break my candy bar up into fourths. I still have two fourths, which is the same thing as one half. But if I represent it as two parts, two parts out of four, which is one half, and I add it to my one fourth from my friend, when we're adding fractions, how many total parts am I going to have? Well, you'll notice that if I add these two parts plus this part, I'm going to have three parts out of my whole. So therefore, my total parts I'll have will be three, and my whole is still going to be four. The big misconception I don't want you guys to make is when you're adding fractions, you make sure you add the top number, which we call our numerator, and you keep your bottom number, which we call our denominator, the same. So two-fourths plus one-fourth equals three-fourths. Now, let's look at another example of being able to add fractions. Here, we have our denominators are the same. We gotta make sure when you're adding fractions, we gotta have our wholes be exactly the same. And I'll explain why that's gonna become trouble if our denominators are not the same. But when they're the same, it's really helpful. All we need to do is just add the top numbers. So 5 eighths plus 2 eighths, you're just gonna add 5 plus 5 plus 2. It's gonna give you 7 eighths. Now, let's take a look at what happens when we have our denominators are not the same? So I drew up two more candy bars. Let's say I have, again, let's say I have one half of my candy bar, and then another friend has a third of a candy bar. All right, so they broke their candy bar up into thirds, and now they give me one third of a candy bar. Well, what fraction of a candy bar, of a whole candy bar, do I have? So I have one half plus one third. What is going to be the total? Well, if we were to stack, this candy bar up top over here, we would get somewhere right around there. Well, that's not exactly another two thirds, right? Because two thirds is right there, and it's more than one half. So I need to figure out, well, uh, where is this point? Well, what I can do is if I section off, meaning divide my candy bar up into a certain number that fits into one half and fits into one third. And what we call by sectioning that off is finding <coughs> your LCM. LCM represents your least common multiple. So what I want to do is I want to find what number <clears throat> does two and three both go into. And you can say the smallest number, the least number that two and three go into would be six. So that's what I did. On my final fraction, on my final candy bar, I split it up into six different pieces. So now if I add one half, well one half of six is three six, right? And <clears throat> one third of six, would be an extra two more pieces. So now when I add one half plus two thirds, what you'll notice is I have one, two, three, four, five, six. So how do we do this algebraically? Well, you want to take, you want to make sure you convert your one half into to six. So to do that, I need to multiply my one half so it becomes out of six. So I need to multiply the bottom by two by three and the top by three. So therefore I have 3, 6. So 3 out of 6 we know is the same thing as 1 half. And here I need to multiply by 2 over 2. 
because three times two is gonna give me six, and one times two is gonna give me two. So therefore, now my denominators are the same, and I can add them. So three plus two equals five sixths. So let's start looking at what if we have some numbers that maybe we don't automatically know what is their least common and not multiple. Well, what you might want to do is start listing the multiples. So if I have six, what do six and four share? I don't know. Let's start writing the multiples, meaning six times one, six times two, six times three, four times one, four times two, four times three, and on and on. So if I write the multiples of six, six, 12, 18, 24, and the multiples of four, four, eight, 12, 16, 20, and 24. Now, I wrote them kind of down for you guys to notice. They both share 24, but they also both share 12. You want to make sure we're going to use the least common multiple. So to get, <clears throat> now I need to put both of these fractions in terms of sixth. So one sixth, to get this into my least common multiple 12, I need to multiply by two over two. And here, to get it as a multiple of 12, I need to multiply by three over three. So when I multiply my fractions, two times one is two, two times six is 12, plus three times one is three, and three times four is 12. Now, all I simply need to do is add the, add the numerators. Since my denominators are the same, two plus three is five over 12. And therefore, if I had one sixth plus one fourth, that's equivalent to five twelfths. So ladies and gentlemen, I gotta get out of here before I get caught, so I'm gonna move on to my next school. But uh, hopefully this helped you out with adding fractions, and uh, I'll talk with you guys in a second.